Um, question number five, the Honourable Dr Jonathan Coleman. To the Minister of Health. What measurable outcomes, if any, will his policies deliver? Uh, the Honourable Jenny Salisa. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Health, improved health for New Zealanders. <clears throat> If the government's projected 2018 health allocation of $846 million is, in his words, pretty much spent on $300 million for primary care and $550 million for DHB pressures, how will he fund his other promises like the $10 million cancer agency, more palliative care, more mental health services and operations for everyone? Mr Speaker. This government is committed to ensuring that we fund the health system much more appropriately. Unlike the member who asked the question, we will fund it in the same way as other governments in the past have. We will fund it through the normal budgetary process. Okay. If there is only $500 million in the half-yearly financial update for capital expenditure over the next five years for all 20 DHBs, where will the $1.4 billion for Dunedin Hospital come from, considering that he's committed to building it within that period and he's ruled out a PPP? This Labour-led coalition government with New Zealand First is committed to ensuring that we fund health appropriately. The last government did not adequately fund health system. One of the reasons why we're looking at a health system now where the DHBs, most DHBs are telling us that they are underfunded is because that member and his previous national government did not fund the health system appropriately. We will go through the budget process and we will fund it just like every other government before has. Point of order. Mr Speaker, I've asked two questions asking how the money will be funded, and the question hasn't been addressed and, adequately. And, and, and the, the members had answers which are far too long, but included that they'll be funded through the budget process. That, that is a perfectly good answer. Dr Liz Craig. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, what action is the government taking to improve health outcomes in winter months? Mr Speaker. Today, we announced the Families Package, which includes the winter energy payment. This will go a significant way in reducing respiratory conditions caused by cold, damp homes and will keep New Zealanders out of hospitals for preventable illnesses. The Honourable Dr. John. Will older people who go to the Gold Coast and Hawaii each year also be eligible for the winter heating package? No, read the details in the family's package. I think they are. Yeah, I think he was. Order. Order. If, if Mr Brownlee would like Dr Coleman to have another supplementary, he will be quiet now. Thank you, Jim. What does the minister estimate that vote health will be in four years' time, given that it's $16.2 billion this year, and he has stated repeatedly that he's increasing vote health by $8 billion over four years? Mr Speaker, the member knows that the budgetary process is a really robust process. He has been in government before for nine long years. We will go through the budget process very soon. He'll just have to be patient and wait for the budget process. Question number six. Jane Logie. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Climate Change and asks, what is the government doing to work with local authorities and communities to help plan for the effects of rising sea levels caused by climate change? Uh, Mr Speaker. The Honourable James Shaw. Uh, tomorrow I will be releasing two reports.